Uh, we're going back uh, to that issue in Kenya. We reconnected uh, with Teddy Otino uh, to tell us about the mood in Kenya uh, owing to the kickoff of uh, presidential campaigns. Welcome back. Right, I asked you earlier that uh, what's the mood like in Kenya, especially in Nairobi, the capital, as the presidential candidates uh, kick off their campaigns? Well, it's all about campaigns right here because uh, it was official as from Sunday that the presidential candidates, uh, like, uh, were actually given the green light to go ahead and start their campaigns. So in the capital, more specifically, there have been campaigns from Sunday afternoon and uh, today, yesterday we also saw uh, the Kenyan president uh, take on his campaigns and of course uh, we've also seen that a repeat of that earlier today. So currently it's a busy, it's a busy, it's a beehive of activity in the country and most of the capital right before they embark on going on to other uh, particular provinces in the country. Over to you. Uh, this is Real Odinga's fourth run for the presidency. Uh, what are his chances of succeeding this time? Well, his chances are pretty high uh, because, um, just to be fair, with uh, while well, having a look at the latest poll, none of the presidential candidates were able to gather the constitutional requirement that is of 50 plus one percent uh, cast. Uh, so, uh, for one to actually uh, get to win an election, you need uh, 50 plus one uh, percent of the total vote. Well, according to a research firm, it will celebrate. Uh, it gave uh, President looking at the incumbent 47% of the total poll, while his closest rival, who is opposition leader, Raila Odinga, had a 42% chance. So Raila at 42%, uh, just a 5% gap between the two, it actually shows that his chances could actually be high this time round. Uh, this bearing in mind the fact that his opposition coalition has a 12% surge uh, since the last survey in January. Over to you. Now, what measures uh, do you know are being put in place uh, to prevent election rigging and also uh, to re a repeat of the 2007 post-election violence? Well, indeed, the important thing is that uh, monthly agencies uh, from the government side have actually been having uh, uh, stakeholder forums over how to actually manage uh, this particular electioneering period. One thing I can attest to is the fact that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, which is the electoral agency, has really set a standard in terms of just how politicians are required to coordinate uh, their particular parties, their political supporters. They won't be required, to, they won't be seen around the various polling centers on the particular polling day after they cast their ballot, uh, because there will be election observers. They've been sent across the country in thousands. And of course, that will be one of the measures that is then put in place. Besides that, there is a multi-agency approach uh, from the police uh, directory, there is from the directory for criminal investigations as well. And of course, we also have the National Cohesion and Integration Commission also working uh, in tandem with the electoral agency. Thank you so much for your time on Network Africa. Let's move over now to Uganda, where Bosco Yokuru. A refugee from Burundi is helping give back to a community that welcomed him years ago when he was fleeing conflict in his native country. Uganda allows refugees to have access to the same services as Ugandan nationals, including the right to work and establish their own businesses. At a health center at Nikavali Refugee Settlement, 300 kilometers west of Uganda's capital, Kampala, Burundian refugee Bosco Niyunkuri is making it his life mission to nurse patients back to health. The facility is one of 70 in Uganda that provides services to both refugees and locals, part of a national integrated service delivery program. For Bosco, the clinic has given him an opportunity to give back to a community that welcomed him over a decade ago when he fled war in his native Burundi. We serve everyone, regardless whether he's a refugee or a national, we serve them Equally. In 1998, the 35-year-old enrolled in a school for paramedics in Burundi's Ngozi province and got a degree in nursing in the midst of a civil war. By 2001, he feared that he would be forcibly recruited and get swept up in the violence. His nursing qualification talked amongst his few belongings. Bosco fled to Uganda. 
After starting out as a volunteer at the clinic 16 years ago, he has been on a full-term contract since 2005 with a monthly salary and family benefits. I really feel, feel at home and they, they also feel me. The integrated service delivery as provided in Nikovali Clinic is a key element of Uganda's refugee and host population empowerment, rehope strategy, an initiative which encourages refugees and their hosts to live together as one community and become more self-reliant. Uganda is widely recognized as having progressive refugee and asylum policies. Meanwhile, Bosco was recently diagnosed with cancer. He hopes to be resettled in another country with more advanced medical care and eventually accomplish one of his biggest dreams. If God wishes, I will have to become a pediatrician. By early December last year, Uganda had become home to almost 511,000 refugees and asylum seekers, the highest number ever in the country's history. Uganda is the third largest refugee hosting country in Africa after Ethiopia and Kenya. Finally on the program, the Soweto Fashion Week is bringing fashion off elite runways and back to a hub of style where many designers actually draw their inspiration Launched in 2011, the Soweto Fashion Week is in its sixth edition. South Africa's Soweto Fashion Week stayed true to its cause, showcasing up-and-coming designers from one of the country's most eclectic suburbs. Established in 2011 to give black designers a platform that is closer to home and independent of the bigger, more conventional events, SFW is now well recognized even beyond South Africa. This year it also featured designs from Nigeria and Namibia. Founder and former model Stephen Manzini says Soweto embodies the experience of every young designer starting out and trying to make a name in the industry. Soweto is a place of struggle. It's a brand on its own. The best way for us to do what we're intending to do was to come to Soweto. Um, Africa as a whole believes in Soweto. Soweto, a township just outside Johannesburg, was once a flashpoint of the fight against apartheid, which ended in 1994. It has grown into a mix of tidy suburbs to serve a growing black middle class. It's that history that Manzini is hoping to tap into with SWF although at first it took time to catch on. Well, it was challenging in the beginning, especially in Soweto. Some people were thinking it's a competition, some people think it's a beauty pageant. And like, what's going on? What's happening? I mean, our first show had like 10 people show up, you know. But now we reach almost 2,000 people a week. Designers like 33-year-old Isaac Lukweni are the herd of SWF. The owner of Tiller Clothes has sold his car to buy a professional sewing machine and started his business four years ago. Initially, he specialized in formal traditional wear for a few clients. But as the business grew, Tiller Clothes became a designer brand, gaining recognition through events like SWF. Uh, they give us a platform where we can showcase to buyers. We can showcase to uh, uh, new clients. It builds a brand. We, we, we meet new people who can open up new doors for us. So it's a, it's a, it's a very great opportunity to showcase uh, your stuff in uh, Soweto Fashion Week, uh, your SA Fashion Week, because it just helps you to get into another level. Lekwene has also been invited to showcase at this year's J Summer Fashion Show in Paris. In the long run, he wants to own his own clothes factory and hire 500 staff to work on different designs across Africa. Johannesburg Fashion Week and Cape Town Fashion Week attract designers and investors from around the world and feature alongside events in Paris and London Fashion Weeks. Well, those were cute up-and-coming models. Well, that's the show today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.